Hey there, everyone. My name is Eric Richards, and I run springshousesonline.com as well as Springs Houses Online Realty. I want to talk to you a little bit about what happened in August, just the month we had finished up, and the charts are finally available. So let's go through the data that the local MLS board has compiled for us to kind of understand what's happening in our market. I think the best way you could summarize things that are happening is it's kind of static. Everyone's holding their breath and waiting for what's going to happen with the election, uh, what's going to happen with the promised um, interest rate reductions that the Federal Reserve keeps mentioning in all of their um, monthly reports, and then also uh, what's going to happen with the amount of inventory is it going to rise is it going to climb you know you get too much inventory in a market and sellers feel pretty helpless and buyers feel like they've got a lot of power um, there's a definitely a fine balance there between the two depending on other market forces so i think everyone's just kind of waiting to see what's going to happen diving specifically into things you can see where my mouse is hovering over these numbers here we've seen a pretty good increase and then we just kind of flattened out and again i think that's interest rates I think that's election uh, tremors, and I think that that's also people just kind of waiting to see what's going to happen with inventory. New listings. We saw a pretty dramatic change, again, from 2023 to 2024 of this little climb right here. Now, is, is 200 extra listings in August a big deal? No, it's not. It's not because we haven't really hit our mild seasonality that occurs in our market, which shifts the activity. Uh, to really dedicated sellers or com committed sellers in the month of October. So I'm not going to put a lot of weight into that. Total under contract. As I've said before, this is the canary in the coal mine for activity. It's a buyer's willingness to put homes under contract. And the larger the number you see here, the more buyer interest there is in the inventory. You can see that during COVID, there was a huge number here, and we are less than half of that in this example here. That being said, remember that not everything that goes under contract closes, and seeing a little bit of an increase here tells me that people have grown accustomed to the higher interest rates. So I'm encouraged by this number. Days on market. I had called out that in this area here that we might flatten out or drop a little bit if inventory continued to rise. And inventory did rise a little bit, but not enough to really make us go from 32 to 38. That's a pretty big shift to add an extra week to the time on market. I attribute this to probably builders sticking some homes back uh, into the MLS that perhaps they were sitting on that were under contract and then fell out. I attribute this also to people pricing their homes a little more aggressively than they should have, meaning that they, they were shooting for the moon and they were hoping for that buyer to come in and say, well, why don't we see what we get for offers and then I'll adjust from there. Um, so to add a week, it's, it's kind of a big deal. And I would mark myself as concerned a little bit on this one. Lastly, total sales year to date, if you're looking for a percentage number, for those of you like the rough calculations, it's about 7% decline from 2023 to 2024 in this number here. I'm going to chalk that all up to election stuff and buyer fatigue with higher interest rates. Lastly, and this one shocked me the most, um, we saw a decline in the average sales price, that's the blue line. Uh, from 571 to 558, and then we also saw a decline in the median. This is going to make more sense in a moment when I go over some other slides, but to move the median sales price down $10,000 as opposed to the average sales price in one month, this is a bigger event here. That meant that more homes, a frequency, remember, there was a lot of them that occurred in that sub $500,000 to say about $450,000 price range. So that really moved the median down. This is a helpful chart if you really like the minutia of all of the stuff. You can go over the single family stuff and you can see that we dropped in uh, July and then in August, you can see that reduction right there. It's a 2.1 or 2.2% reduction compared to August. It's not that big of a pullback. This helps you understand some stuff. Um, I like to focus on this big number right here because, again, Colorado Springs is a pretty big real estate market. And from beginning of the year 
to August, right up until this moment last year, we had sold about $4.4 billion in real estate. Now we're at 4.2. So that 4.6% reduction in sales volume is really telling. Um, that hurts builders, that hurts the overall market activity. And I would estimate that around a 1% to 2% reduction in cumulative year-to-date sales is really what the buying public feels or the selling public feels when they think, man, it feels depressed. It feels a little bit off. Now, homes aren't selling like they used to. And, and this would be the actual statistical number that kind of supports that conclusion. Let's dive into some other numbers. In July, um, I like this chart because what it does is it talks about the active to sold listing analysis. So this category right here is what I pay attention to. That's the percentage of homes that are listed. What did it take for them to do a price reduction in order to sell? In the $300 to $400,000 price point, 50% of homes had to take a 2% price reduction. 41%, 38%, you can see it kind of tapers off. As to why that occurs at those upper levels where the price reduction is less and less and less, remember, 2% of, say, a million dollars is a lot of cheddar versus a uh, you know 2% pullback at 200000 Here, the average price reduction ended up being about 8.8%. So it definitely moves the needle in terms of pricing. What's also factored in here, too, is people may not take price reductions. Uh, they may take... Um, you know, some sort of uh, adjustment for not having air conditioning or needing some windows or just maybe that was part of the negotiation process when the home finally did sell. What did they do during their inspection? And, they, and unfortunately, there's not enough information to really go on here. Also, kind of one that popped out to me right away is that um, while there was only a, a few sales, 60% of the homes had to take a price reduction here in Teller County. Now, going forward to August, this is a little more... Uh, telling because these numbers are very consistent, 50% and 49.4. So just recently, this $300 to $400,000 price point, 50% of homes had to take a price reduction. If this trend continues, and this is the sound bite that you can kind of say, hey, I was listening to this realtor talk about our market. If we continue to see about 50% of homes between $300 and $500,000, our meat and potatoes of Colorado Springs, take price reductions and the Fed doesn't drop the interest rates and the election news is still kind of churning and going up until November, we could really begin to see a dramatic pullback in prices. Why is that? Because when everyone assumes that price reductions are the way that things have to get sold, it kind of gets baked into the idea or the marketing strategy. So back to COVID, this number here was no price reductions. In fact, they were price increases. So this is a big deal. Anyway, hopefully you find that information incredibly helpful. Um, I just want to leave you with this idea right here that our prices fluctuate uh, no matter what's going on. This median number has definitely started to turn another direction here. Who knows? What does the future bring for us come uh, September, October, and November stats? Thank you so much for watching, and I'll look forward to speaking with you soon.